Hi, I'm Jeff Van West reporting for AvWeb and Aviation Consumer, and Garmin invited us to take a flight in this Mooney 430 Golf, which is equipped with a G600 aftermarket glass cockpit. This gave us a great opportunity to look at some of the strengths and challenges of this kind of a setup, particularly in relation to instrument approaches. The G600 boots up with screens that are familiar to just about anyone who's flown a G1000. The version we flew had synthetic vision, as well as the safe taxi diagrams. Test pilot Tom Carr used these diagrams as part of our briefing, pointing out where I should hold short of the runway. Commonly changed inputs are done through buttons and a single knob on the left side of the G600. Heading, course, altitude, vertical speed, and the altimeter setting. When you push a button, the number you're changing appears in the upper left. You dial it in, and then you're done. The system we flew had a full set of Jeppesen charts. These are geo-referenced so that the airplane appears on the chart even while you're still on the ground. You can zoom in to see any piece of the chart up close, but we found the display was just large enough that we could see a complete chart without zooming. Government charts are also available, but without the geo-referencing. Before we went to hunt the wild approach, we took a look at how the G600 displayed obstacles in our path. It was a bumpy day, so the video here is a bit choppy. We're heading for a tower that's almost 2,500 feet high. You can't see it out the front of the airplane, but you can clearly see it on the G600 display. You'll actually hear two obstacle warnings, one from the G600 and one from the GNS 530 in the panel. Watch how the tower turns yellow on the PFD, left side of the display, and then red as we get the pull-up warning. It'll now pass off the left wing. Weather information is well integrated into the G600. Here's the main weather page, just like you'd see on a G1000. Scroll over any airport, you can get the airport information and have soft key access to the weather. Although you will have to scroll down to the raw text in order to see when that report was issued. Here's the same kind of thing, but going from the flight plan group, where you can select an airport and quickly get to its airport information or details about the weather. You may have noticed that on that flight plan page, you are also able to see a quick view of the METAR as well as whether charts were available for that airport. Speaking of charts, or approach plates to be more specific, they are on their own page in the flight plan group. We found this worked actually quite well in practice, where we could call up a plate, have it ready for view when we shot the approach. But unlike the G1000, this is not a fully integrated system, so you can see the frequency, but you may have to enter it manually in whatever NAVCOM you have hooked up to the G600 system. Here's the panel as it sat in the Mooney. One of the things about the G600 is you'll actually enter your approaches in the separate NAVCOM or GPS, and then that approach will appear on the G600 screen. In practice, this means that you'll be moving back and forth between the different displays. We found actually this was less cumbersome than we thought it was going to be. In fact, having a PFD and an MFD right in front of you with the MFD for the chart for an instrument approach, as well as having the GPS screens available just off to your right, worked quite well because you were able to put the chart on one screen and load up the approach on the other while still referencing the chart. The multiple small screens of the G600 cockpit is actually both a strength and a weakness. The PFD-MFD combination right in front of the pilot works beautifully in our opinion. The numbers are just large enough that they're easily readable, yet all the information, including the approach plate or weather, if you had a weather page up, is right there for you to see. The disadvantage is that you have to have a wider scan to see information that comes up on the NAVCOMs that are fairly far off to your right. For example, with many autopilots, the level of integration varies, and for this, our NAV approach, we need to follow a message queue to enable the right outputs so that the autopilot could capture and fly the glide slope as part of the approach. If you're thinking about a G600 or G500 system, make sure you know what level of integration is possible between that system and your own autopilot, as it varies quite a bit.
When it came to actually flying the approaches, we found the compact size of the G600 screen actually easier than flying in the G1000 system. Toss in the synthetic vision and it's even easier to get straight to the runway. On our approaches, the system inadvertently demonstrated another great feature, particularly for practicing in visual conditions, traffic right on the PFD display. We decided to break off this approach a little bit early because even though we could see the aircraft on the PFD, we never caught sight of him outside the window. If you want to find out more about the G600, the G500, or any other of the Garmin products, you can check out their website at www.garmin.com, or you can look in issues of Aviation Consumer. Look for more coverage of the G600, G500 coming up next year. I'm Jeff Van West for Aviation Consumer and AvWeb. Thanks for watching.